What's up everyone, Ashton Bingham here with Muse Themes. We have yet another release in our Connect series of widgets that I'm very excited to share with you. A widget that I think many of you are really going to like. This is Hero Connect, a widget that allows you to create dynamic, full-screen hero images and hero videos with customizable display modes, image shuffling, text, and more. And it's a Connect widget, so you literally just drop the widget in Muse and all the content is controllable dynamically, meaning you can update it via a Google spreadsheet without even having to open Muse, or you can give your client's ability to do so as well. We have a three-pronged live demo here showing a few of the ways you can customize this. Now this is obviously our full screen hero. This is kind of the heart of the hero image. It can be set to be a fixed size or full screen, the latter of which borrows technology from our superhero widget which allows the images to be displayed full screen at all times, no matter what your browser size or shape, and will adjust fluidly as well. We also have customizable captions, as you can see here. We have a title and a subtitle, both of which have separate unique styling controls. And you also get this stylable button that you can link anywhere that you want. We also have a variety of display modes. You can have it set to random, which will shuffle the images and text randomly, or you can set the images to time intervals. If I click to our second example, this is just a text example as there's no image being used here, but you can see we've set it to reflect the day of the week. But you can also set it to correspond to the time of day, like dawn, morning, afternoon, and night, or you can even set it hourly. So lots of variety available to you here. And as I mentioned, it also supports video. I can click over to our third example, and we have a beautiful full screen video playing with customizable captions here as well, of course. So let's jump into Muse and take a look at our setup here. I've already imported the MuLib into my library, so I'll just drag the widget out onto the page. And when we do that, similar to many of our other Connect widgets, you're just going to get this one large placeholder sitting here on the page. So let's expand our settings panel and take a look. Again, if you've used any of our Connect widgets already, a lot of this is going to look very familiar to you. Our first option selects if you're going to use Google Sheets, which is the recommended way of doing it and allows you that remote access to changes without needing Muse access. Or we have the local CSV option, to which we've included the default starter spreadsheets and the zip file that you'll receive upon widget download. We also have our two spreadsheet keys here for the Google Sheets method, one for content and one for presets. They're both pre-filled with our sample default templates, but we're going to change that shortly. And before I get into the spreadsheet stuff, let's talk about the positioning of this widget really quick. The size of this placeholder will basically reflect the size of your hero image. So if you're looking for a full width image, you simply want to set this element to be full width. And then you can size it vertically to match the amount of space that you want it to take up. Now, if you want it to be a full screen image, you're going to have to keep this set to full width, and then you'll also need to position the entire widget so that it's just touching the very top of your canvas. And then once you do that, there's a setting in the panel here that you'll need to change. If we expand this setup dropdown, you'll need to change display mode from default to full screen. And once you do that, you can still continue to design and add content to your page to sit beneath the widget. Similar to Superhero, the image or video will take up the full screen of whatever the browser size is, and the rest of your content will load beneath it as normal. Now I'm going to come back to the rest of the settings panel stuff in a moment, but right now let's get our spreadsheet set up. As usual with Connect, we included the links directly to the default spreadsheets here in the bottom of the settings panel. So let's start with the content spreadsheet. We'll click this, and we get directed to our default spreadsheet for the widget content. And as always with Connect widgets, we need to make a copy of this spreadsheet and publish it to the web before we can make any changes. So I'm going to go to File, Make a Copy, and we'll give it a name. We'll go ahead with Muse Themes Content, and we'll click OK. Great. Now we just need to publish it to the web. So again, we're going to go to File, and click Publish to Web. And we want the entire document, and we want it saved as a CSV file. And then we'll click Publish. And our last step is to grab our spreadsheet key, which we can find in the URL. There's a very long string of numbers and letters in here between two slashes. And that's what we want to select. We'll copy it. 
head back to the widget, and we'll paste that in the first field for our content spreadsheet. Perfect. Now, any changes I make to this published spreadsheet will be automatically reflected in the widget. And I can actually already preview this in the browser, and it's already functioning with our default content. And remember, I left it on full screen when we were last in the settings panel, so everything is filling the screen as it's supposed to. And I can even adjust the browser size, and everything is responding really nicely. So now we need to link up our presets spreadsheet. So from the panel, we'll click the link to the presets default spreadsheet. And we're going to follow the same process as before. We'll make a copy, give it a name, Muse Themes Presets. Great. And we'll publish it to the web. Awesome. And we'll grab our spreadsheet key, copy that, and paste it back in the settings panel. Awesome. Now let's go over our spreadsheet options. The first one I want to point out is on the presets sheet. The very first setting here is our display type. This is sort of a master setting for all of your timing settings and should probably be the first one that you change. The middle column here called MT value is where you're going to make your changes. And if you're using Google Sheets, there's even this really helpful drop down for you to simply select the option. But on this far right column, we have all the notes as to what you're actually supposed to type in case you need reference. So if I click the drop down, we have several options to pick from that I briefly mentioned earlier. Starting with random. This will tell the widget to cycle through your rows on your spreadsheet randomly. And what I mean by rows is that everything in a single row will remain together. So whatever caption text is in a row with an image will be displayed with said image. Static. You'll only want to use this if you only want one image displayed without any cycling. Hourly. If I switch over to my content spreadsheet really quick, you see after the hero ID, we have a column labeled MT Hero Hourly and then a succession of other timing settings. So depending on what you choose here in the presets, it will tie itself to the corresponding column, and all other time columns will be ignored. So if you do choose hourly in the presets, the hours here match to the hours in a day, starting with zero at midnight. So one would be 1 a.m., 12 would be 12 noon, 23 would be 11 p.m., and so forth, just like military time. And when using this mode, it's best that you include all the hours of a day, 0 to 23. If you want images to cover several hours at a time, just repeat them in the rows. Now back on presets, we also have daily. This ties to the MT Hero Daily column on the content spreadsheet. Pretty simple. Whatever day of the week you have listed will match up with the image you link to it later in the row. Part of day, similar to daily, you'll just need to select from dawn, morning, afternoon, and night in the drop-down menu on the content spreadsheet. And the last one is time interval. Now this one is a little bit different than the others in that it is controlled here in the presets sheet instead of the content sheet. What you do is set the drop down to time interval, and then you need to set the number of minutes in the time range setting two rows down. And this setting works like the hourly setting. It will just cycle through the images based on the interval that you set, and that interval is in minutes. So we'll come back to this presets spreadsheet shortly, but let's explore the content spreadsheet a little bit more. The first column is Hero ID. Now this can be anything, it just needs to be unique to each item. MT Hero Media Type. This is where you specify if it's an image or a video. MT Hero Media. This is where you're going to put your image or video link. And a really quick note here about that, in case you're new to the Connect widgets, this is not just any URL to a web page with a video on it. This has to be a direct link to a hosted video or image file. And in most cases, it will end in .jpg, .mp4, whatever the case may be. Now, there's lots of options for image and video hosting. And if you haven't yet, please check out a video Steve did in the Gallery Connect playlist. There's an add-on video in there solely dedicated to the variety of ways that you can host your content. Hero Title. This is your main title text. And right next to that is your description text. So if I just click over to our live demo again really quick... You can see both a title and a subtitle type of setup, so that's what that's referring to. And back on the spreadsheet here, these last two settings are for your button. Now you can set the displayed text here, and of course the URL in this final column. 
And you're also welcome to enable or disable this button, which you can do from the preset spreadsheet. And there's also a setting in there for you to choose between hyperlinking within the same browser tab or in a new one. So let's go over a little bit more on the preset spreadsheet before we jump back to the widget. As usual, there are a ton of options here, and I'm not going to go over every single one in detail, but there are a few things that I do want to point out. Under timed display settings, we already covered display type, but we also have static item ID. This is only used if your display type is set to static. You're going to type the ID here for the item that you want displayed at all times. Time range, as we mentioned earlier, this is where you set the time interval if you're going to use the time interval setting as your display type. The range is in minutes, so you can set that here. Caption settings, this section allows you to control how the captions are displayed. This first one here I'll note, caption background, this is used if you need your caption to stand out from the image a little more than usual. For instance, if you're using white text on a light photo or something like that. I'm going to scroll down here to button settings. This first option allows you to enable or disable the button. Just enter 1 or 0 as noted here on the right. Button link target allows you to set the link to the same browser tab or to a new browser tab, as I mentioned earlier. And button border radius. This is kind of like that radius setting in Muse. With the default setting of 200, the button will be round. If you bring this number down closer to 0, it will start to make it square. And then using the width and height settings a little lower down will control the shape of the button. So before we wrap up, I want to check out these widget settings panel options really quick. As explained in previous Connect tutorials, we do include as much as we can in the preset spreadsheets in order to diminish the need to use Muse itself for the widget maintenance. But there are a few settings that have to be controlled from within Muse. Inside the setup section, we already covered display mode. Make sure it's set to default or full screen, depending on what you want. Beneath that, you have your styling options for your preloader, and this is what you see in the browser while your content is loading. And lastly here, we've covered this in other Connect Widget tutorials, but the local storage option allows you to set if the sheet data can stay in your browser's local storage, so that it doesn't have to be downloaded every single time. This is useful to aid the designer during the setup and testing of the widget. So I think that just about covers it. Thanks again, guys, for hanging in on this tutorial, and as always, reach out to us if you need assistance with anything or you just want to say hi. Have a great day.